today's call to worship. Raise your voices in response to God's goodness. We praise you, O Lord, for all the blessings you have given us. Lift your hearts in sweet surrender to God's mercy. We thank you, O Lord, for hearing the prayers of our hearts. God is good. Praise be to God. The love and mercy of God never fails. Amen. Amen. And the opening prayer. Heavenly Father, it is out of deep need that we come before you today. We come seeking your presence and your guidance. As Jesus charged his 12 disciples, help us to understand that you have charged us as well. Lead us as he led them into the fields ready for harvest, that we may become faithful laborers in your vineyard. We ask this in our Savior, Jesus' name. Amen. Take the name of Jesus with you, child of scripture comes from Matthews 9, 35, and 10, 8. 35 says, Jesus went through all the towns and villages teaching in their synagogues, proclaiming the good news of the kingdom and healing every disease and sickness. When he saw the crowds, he had compassion on them because they were harassed and helpless like sheep without a shepherd. Then he said to his disciples, the harvest is plentiful but the workers are few. Ask the Lord of the harvest, therefore to send out workers into his harvest field. 10 says, Jesus called his 12 disciples to him and gave them authority to drive out impure spirits and to heal every disease and sickness. These are the names of the 12 apostles. First, Simon, who is called Peter, and his brother Andrew. James, son of Zebedee, and his brother John, Philip and Bartholomew, Thomas and Matthew, the tax collector, James, son of Alphaeus and Thaddeus, Simon the Zealot, and Jesus Iscariot, who betrayed him. These twelve Jesus sent out with the following instructions. Do not go among the Gentiles or enter any town of the Samaritans. Go rather to the lost sheep of Israel. As you go, proclaim this message. The kingdom of heaven has come near. Heal the sick, raise the dead, cleanse those who have leprosy, drive out demons. Freely you have received, freely give. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. I would begin today's sermon with a short prayer. 
Heavenly Father, we need your healing love today. Enable us to truly act as your disciples, creating us new hearts filled with your compassion. Transform us in the coming days and weeks ahead so that we would be used for your glory. May we hear and follow the urgings of the Holy Spirit more and more with each passing day. Lord, now prepare our hearts not to hear my words, but to hear your voice. May it be that the words of my mouth and the meditations of all of our hearts always be acceptable in your eyes. Lord, you are our rock and you are our redeemer. Amen. I preached last week on where we are clearly seeing the breakdown of Christian morals and values within the goings on of society and how that very well may be an indictment on the effectiveness of the church to speak into the world today. I also mentioned that the other half of the story, so to speak, is that clearly the world in which we live needs to hear the, the gospel of Jesus Christ. And certainly those who do not know it or him are in desperate need to hear the message. We speak of the mission of the United Methodist Church as go and make disciples of Jesus Christ for the transformation of the world. We proclaim it openly while we are within the walls of the church. Sadly, seldom do we take it beyond the four walls. And I want to today, in light of the past couple of weeks and within the context of the scripture reading this morning, lead you into a greater understanding of why nothing short of going forward and sharing the message of Jesus Christ is the most important thing that we could do for someone else. It is indeed the very essence of loving someone else to share the saving gospel of Jesus Christ with them. It very well may be that we need to be challenged to understand that we have come to believe our role as a church may be wrong. I know from conversations and experience that for many, church and faith is a very personal thing. I have heard amazing stories and have been blessed to hear how people's lives have been changed or transformed when they came to an understanding that Jesus Christ was their personal Savior. Someone who had served years in prison, who had nothing when they came out and came to rely upon a church family as their family. It wasn't because they had great faith that took them into the church. It was because they had nowhere else to turn and the church took them in. Yet that person still didn't understand why the church would do that for them. And it wasn't until someone in that church shared Christ with them that their eyes were opened and their heart was changed and they came to understand the reason why the church exists. A family that was torn apart by drugs and alcohol was shown by a congregation that clearly there was certainly a better way, an alternative to the way in which they were living. A church that showed them that it didn't matter where they were presently, or where they had come from, what they had been involved in, but that they were accepted and loved. And that is what Christ had intended for them to be loved. They were shown who Jesus was through the church. A man prepared at his wit's end, prepared to take his own life, met a stranger, a stranger who happened to take notice of him and asked him if he would be willing to share a meal 
with him. We notice that he was down and out and certainly acting strange. During the meal, just being willing to listen to that man's story. That man shared Jesus Christ with him. And that man was profoundly affected. It changed his outlook on everything and gave him hope and purpose like he had never known before. And that man shared with him that he had learned that in church and he just wanted to give him what he had. That man came to know what church is all about. And the question I have for you today is this. Are you willing to love others enough to share Jesus with them? Are you prepared to move into the most uncomfortable of, of spaces to share the gospel of Jesus Christ with others? These days we clearly see a society that lifts up and praises people for pointing out problems with other people. Yet very few solutions are offered. It is the easy thing to do to point at the problems and issues that someone else has. It's easy to disagree and make somebody else a target. The world seems to enjoy that. The world seems to enjoy chaos. It swirls all around us. And it pulls Christians in every day. Sin is part and parcel of it all. It is the central battle that rages with each and every person every day in the hearts of all humankind, you and I included. The world, those who do not have Christ in their lives, are fighting, are fighting battles with no hope of winning. Temporary victories are followed by struggles. Life for many moved from one devastating point to another with only brief interludes of rest. What begins to be acceptable in their eyes in the end won't even make sense to them. Questions will become unanswerable. Why do these things happen to me, they ask. Why do I do the things that I do? Why am I so unhappy? Even the well-intended answers given by Christians will not make sense to them at times. The one thing that is constant in the midst of all of those struggles is that their hearts yearn for something else, something better. At the very core of everyone's being, even those who are far from God, there is a glimmer of recognition of who it is that they are seeking after and what it is that they are missing and that they are indeed the creation of God, created in His very image. That knowledge, that faint light, however small it may be, is always enough to cause doubt about where they find themselves. It is here and why the church exists. There are people all around us who are struggling with the meaning of it all. Certainly they may say that they know Jesus, and yet they don't understand why it is that a group of followers exists on the corner of 5th and Carpenter, and they come together on Sunday mornings. There was a time when people knew why church existed. All people knew. They understood the Christian values and morals, and they knew that the church helped to teach and sharpen and reinforce the beliefs that they held. Statistics alone should be of a concern for the church today. Church attendance from the 1930s through the 1990s hovered around 70%. Seven of 10 of your neighbors went to church from 1999 until now. That number has dropped dramatically. 
the number has dropped to maybe 5 out of 10 and is inching ever closer to that 4 out of 10. I would consider on Sunday mornings in the future when we can meet again, but certainly on the Sunday mornings to recall how many of your neighbors were going to church. In other words, in the last 20 years, the church has become less and less important and has been less and less effective in reaching people. And I wonder, how are we to take that in? What are we to understand from those numbers? And I would suggest that it is in great part due to the teaching part that I mentioned last week. Teaching is seen as a less and less important role in the church today. Sunday school is attended by fewer and fewer people. And thus that gets back to the original question today. What is the role of the church to be in the world moving forward? We, the church, need to return ourselves to God's word so that we might reclaim our understanding of why we have come together as a body of believers. We need to better understand what it means to love others. The church seems content to suggest that love lies in the eye of the beholder. It is something different for each person. Live and let live seems to be uh, frequently growing within the church's call. But how does that world uh, affect it around us by that call? How does that message resonate when chaos seems to reign in the world today? What then is the solution? The problem's easy to see. What's the solution? How can that be fixed? The single greatest gift that you and I can give another person is an introduction to the God who declared that his mission was to find every person who was lost and to bring them home again. Being willing to share the story of Jesus Christ and why he came. He came for the sole purpose of laying down his life in a horrific way, beaten and hung on a cross to die. And he gave that life up as a sacrifice to God, taking upon himself all of our sins. He did that so that on the third day, when God raised him from the dead, that those who believed in Christ would be able to stand one day before God and be judged as righteous, not because of the things that we have done, but because of the work that Christ did on the cross. And in the end, those who do so would be granted eternal life in heaven instead of the eternal separation in hell that we deserve. Let us allow ourselves to reach out, to form relationships out into the world. Let us listen to the promptings of the Holy Spirit and make ourselves available to His leadings, that we might be those looking to help rescue people from death. Certainly, Look at your own families. Think about them and their eternal being. Jesus said in Revelation 3.20, Behold, I stand at the door and knock. If anyone hears my voice and opens the door, I will come into him and dine with him, and he with me. You who have heard that knocking, and have opened that door, you have received the greatest gift ever given. Do not keep the gift of Jesus Christ to yourself. Let us pray. Father, open our hearts, our minds, and our ears that we may be led to help others hear the knock upon the doors of their hearts. Father, we ask 
so that they too would allow Jesus to come into their lives and to dine with them. Give us the strength and the courage to share Jesus with others in the days and weeks ahead. We ask all this in our risen Savior, Jesus Christ's name. Amen.